When we began exploring aspects of public speaking, we started with the foundational building blocks, or the principles, which were the general purpose, specific purpose, and central idea. Over the next several minutes, we are going to talk about how to structure and organize your speeches or presentations. To begin, I'd like to start with the scientific art of giving any sort of presentation. What I'm about to share with you sounds very simple. There are many different elements involved in each, but if we remember the simplicity of it all, it'll help us to have an effective structure and organization. To begin, you want to tell the audience what you're going to tell them. Next, tell them. And finally, tell the audience what you just told them. Essentially, this first T, tell the audience what you're going to tell them, can be considered your introduction. The next T, tell them, that's your body. And the final T, tell them what you just told them, is the conclusion. I am going to start with the middle T, telling them. This is what we call the body of the presentation. The body is the meat and potatoes of your presentation. This is where you are feeding us the knowledge as it relates to the topic. You have to make sure though that you structure and organize the main points in the presentation in a specific order. What's great about your presentations is that the order is already placed for you, which is the five steps to becoming ethically transformed. So we call that in the public speaking world, topic order. So if my topic is on the 3M organization, my specific purpose after hearing my presentation, my audience will see how ethically transformed 3M is. My central idea, 3M used five steps to become an ethically transformed organization. So my main points then from there will be setting clear expectations, so that's the first topic, modeling and reinforcing desired behavior, that's the second topic or main point. The third main point or topic is focus on skill building and problem solving. The fourth, providing tools for people to act ethically, and five, providing correct feedback. We call this topic order because they are subtopics that relate to the main topic, which in this case is how 3M became an ethically transformed organization. For every main point, and you have five, they are already set out for you right here, you need at least two forms of support. At least two. You can have more, but remember, think about the minimum, at least two. There are many different types of supporting material, and you want to make sure that you're using a variety. So you might use definitions coupled with examples. If you're defining a complex term, you want to help us visualize that complex term by also coupling it with an example. You might use statistics, which is numerical data, to show us the emphasis on a main point it is that you're making. You might use analogies, or you might compare and contrast things. You might use anecdotes or quotations and testimony. Whatever you choose to use, make sure that each main point has at least two forms of support and that you're using a variety of support. Why? Because support has specific functions. The first specific function is that it is to clarify points that you're making. As noted in chapter four, people of different backgrounds tend to attach different meanings to words. When you use support, it helps the listeners understand the point you're trying to make. We can visualize what it is that you're saying to help us clarify, oh, that's what the speaker means. Next is to prove. Support is used as evidence to prove the truth in what you are saying. This is done more often in speeches that are meant to persuade an audience, but if you find that you are proving a point as it relates to one of the five ethical transformations, you can use um, a support to prove. Next, it makes your presentation interesting. We might not remember everything that you had to share with us, but if you are strategic 
in the support that you're using, it will make your presentation more interesting, which will then make it more memorable. You want us to be able to walk away with a lasting impression about what you shared with us. Use supporting material to make that lasting impression to help us retain the information that you shared with us. A couple of things to be mindful for in the body of the presentation is you want to avoid information underload and overload. Simply meaning looking at the guidelines that are given to you, making sure that you have your five main points that are already set out for you with at least two forms of support underneath it. You want to specialize and simplify whenever possible and gather the necessary amount of information that the assignment calls for. Give us enough information to visualize your experience. Whatever is left over, we can maybe ask you about in an online discussion board, if, if need be. But you want to simplify whenever possible, but make sure that you have a well-rounded point for each of the main points you're delivering. So again, just to kind of overview what we just talked about, the body of the speech, telling them, this is where your five main points will be talked about and you will have at least two forms of support for each main point. You want to make sure that you use a variety of support that can help clarify, prove, make your presentation more interesting, and also make it memorable. The next aspect of structure and organization I would like to talk about is the introduction. The introduction is where you create the information hunger. This is that first T we talked about. Tell the audience what you're going to tell them. In order to do that, when you get yourself all set up to deliver your presentation, you want to draw your audience in by grabbing our attention. Once you've grabbed our attention, you'll naturally reveal your topic and then you can move into the next step, which is to state the central purpose of the presentation. Remember, it's that overall main idea, the third building block we discussed when we were talking about the principles of public speaking. After you've stated your central idea, you will then preview your main points. Your main points are those five steps of how the organization became ethically transformed. So you're going to preview. Today I'm going to be talking to you about one, two, three, four, and five, your main points. So grab our attention, draw us in, state the central purpose, provide a preview statement. Now you might be asking yourself, well, how the heck do I draw my audience in, Heather? It's really simple. You can use a startling statement or a fact. You can ask a rhetorical question, one that we answer in our heads. You can tell an interesting or funny story, use a quote, suspense, or talk about a personal experience. Whatever you decide to do, make sure that it's relating directly to your topic. Because once you draw us in, you're going to state your overall main idea, the central idea, and then preview your main points. Everything we do in public speaking is done with intention, so you want to remember those three steps in the introduction. Grab our attention, state your central idea, preview your main points. Then you'll move into the body, and then lastly, after the body, is the conclusion. This is that satisfying burp, if you will. The introduction you drew us in, the body you filled us with the information, the conclusion is where you sum up everything you just told us to leave that lasting impression. So this is that final T, tell the audience what you just told them. There are three specific functions for the conclusion. You want to forewarn your audience you're about to finish, restate that central idea in the exact same way that you stated it in the beginning, you want to review your main points in the exact order that you presented them in the body, and then you want to lead the audience into a vivid close. Okay? So draw you're gonna remember you're taking us on this journey, right? So you're from beginning, middle to end. Now somewhere in the middle, we might you might lose us, but the conclusion, if you forewarn us that you're about ready to get finished presenting 
And then that will re-engage our brains to actively stay in contact and engaged with the content that you're sharing with us. You'll restate that central idea, review those main points, and lead the audience into a vivid close. You want to make sure that you present balance in your presentation. So some ways that you can lead us into a vivid close um, might be to, if you started with a startling statement or a fact, end with peace. We all can have the information you gave us and have a sense of calm about what you've, what you've presented. Um, if you started with a rhetorical question, restate it, but then tell us that we should arrive at the same answer and then tell us what that answer is. So at the beginning of this speech, I, all asked, you, I asked you all, insert question, based upon the information that I've provided for you today, you all should arrive to insert the, the response or the, the answer. You could end with an interesting or funny story or you can use a quote that sums everything up that you just talked about. But again, remember, in the conclusion, forewarn us that you're getting ready to finish and then you're gonna restate that central idea, review those main points, and lead the audience into a vivid close. Some things to consider for the conclusion. Don't end abruptly. Don't just call it quits. You want to signal and then restate, review, lead to a vivid close. Don't ramble. Whatever you do, don't present any new information in the conclusion. This just confuses the audience. And you don't need to apologize. If you made a mistake, keep moving forward. It's okay. We won't know you've made a mistake unless you've pointed it out. The final touch that brings everything together that we just talked about, the introduction, the body, and the conclusion, are what we call connectives. These connectives link sections of your presentation together to keep you, the speaker, and us, the audience, on track with the content that you're sharing. It helps to keep your speech moving forward. So think about some connectives that you've used in the past. They might be what we call transitional statements or signposts, first, second, third, furthermore, afterwards, those types of connectives. Your introduction, whatever you use um, in your introduction, you want to make sure that you connect to the body and connect to the conclusion. So after you've previewed your main points in the introduction, you might say something along the lines of, let's start with main point number one. And then you'll move through it that way. And then of course, you'll connect in the body and then to connect from the body to the conclusion, you might simply use the phrase in conclusion or to conclude. Make sure that you have those connectives in there because those connectives will help you to stay on track, help the audience to stay on track, and help your presentation to move forward.